If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already. And with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 20 of the Inter Milan career mode here on FIFA 15. We start with a home game at the San Siro against Fiorentina. Not the strongest of sides, but still one of the more recognisable sides in the Italian leagues. They currently sit 8 points behind us in 7th, but they're level 1 points with 5th and 6th Genoa. So it's uh, quite tight there for those Europa League spots. And then at the top, it's quite tight for the title. Myself and uh, three other sides are very, very close in a very, very close quarters with each other when it comes to trying to get ourselves up towards the upper reaches of those uh, those Champions League spots. And obviously, we've had a bit of a wobble recently, which has seen us drop from first to fourth. But like I say, it is extremely tight there. And uh, they're playing the similar formation to us, as you can see, a 3-5-2 of sorts, although it's pretty strange 3-5-2. There's a lot of defensive players down there, but they are, of course, a very narrow back line, as you can see here. Not really uh, covering the wide areas too well. I've got a lot of space out wide. Plenty of room for uh, extra people to get around the back. As you can see, Cerdin Shakiri stands the ball up. Mauro Icardi goes up. Doesn't quite win the first header. And actually, Kovacic doesn't quite win the second header either. That did take a deflection and went out for a corner. So uh, we'll stand it up into the box and maybe Cerdin Shakiri can provide a better cross. This time, he does find the head of Nemanja Vidic, but a decent header is well saved by uh, their goalkeeper whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce because uh, I think it's a really long Romanian name that I just stand no chance of actually being able to properly get out of my mouth but Gary Medell's clean through one-on-one -on -one here and a few times this season he scored in situations like that but that particular finish is what I expected of him the few times that he went through and scored so I'm not really too surprised that he wasn't able to get the ball into the back of the net but it drops to Guarin here on the edge of the box after this free kick lovely turn by Icardi and a beautiful slotted finish finish inside the near post to give us a 1-0 lead no less than we deserved after the domination in this first half that we've kind of had Fiorentina pen back in their own half but they sparked themselves into a bit of life in the second half obviously the manager must have said something at half time that kind of gave them some extra motivation as you can see the passing the ball about quite nicely here Joaquin is obviously one of the better dribblers in Serie A but not one of the better finishers, unfortunately. Brilliant feat until the uh, the shot itself, which was quite poor, to say the least. But they were going to have me on the back foot again. Micah Richards bursting forward from left centre-back and uh, stands the ball up into the box. Good ball, actually. Well brought down by Giardino. An even better finish on the end of it. One of the uh, the players that kind of... One of the players that was hotly tipped in Italy and he's uh, a world-class career just kind of passed him by, unfortunately. He had so much potential, just never filled, uh, never lived up to it. But uh, unfortunately for us, though, as you can see, Musa Sissoko tries the extravagant overhead kick. Can't quite find the back of the net, though. Brilliant technique, just no accuracy, and it goes past the post. We stay at 1-1. And then in the final few moments of the game, Sissoko's clean through again here. Not really too sure whether to pass it out wide or come inside myself. Decided to do the latter. Lovely finesse shot, unfortunately, blocked by the defender. And that means we get a 1-1 draw at the end of the game rather than a victory that really would have seen us uh, push towards the top of the table again. I was quite disappointed that I had so much of the ball and so many chances but wasn't quite able to find myself a second goal. I was disappointed in myself and uh, obviously disappointed in the finishing of my players as well. So we come into arguably a more difficult game away from home against Napoli, although they're not having the best of seasons so far. Down in 12th, as you can see, 7 wins, 8 draws and 10 defeats, which is very un-Napoli-like. Not really too sure whether... Um, Rafa Benitez will still be in charge at this particular moment in time. But they're starting their rather formidable 4-2-3-1 formation with Higuain up top, De Guzman, Cajon and uh, Dries Mertens there in the the three attacking midfield spots. And this is an extremely strong side at Napoli. I don't know why they're underperforming. Obviously, before we had the issues with the save, uh, they were sat top of the table. So uh, there is the talent there to do well. And we're playing a quite a heavy rotation side here. Unfortunately, it was uh, this game came kind of two or three days after the game against Fiorentina. So most of my my first team players were actually quite tired so I had to rotate them all out and they were going to take advantage of that in the opening few minutes. Uh, I was a bit on the back foot, wasn't really too sure where all of my players were going to be because uh, they definitely play a complete different way when I play a rotation side and Higuain just found himself behind the line of the goalkeeper but onside which is very very strange. Uh, it was a good positioning from him taking advantage of the fact that one of the defenders had dropped extremely deep onto the goal line and uh, found himself onside there and made the most of it by scoring the goal but Nagatomo plays it across to Brozovic here. Doesn't get too much first team football Brozovic but he is still growing quite nicely 
Although his finishing isn't one of the stats that's growing to its best capacity. He's more of a, a passer and tackler, to be completely honest. But the ball drops to Walter Gargano here after we don't quite clear it as best as we could have done. And he hits the outside of the post. A real let off for us there. We could have been 2-0 down after uh, 40 minutes or so. And they're going to get the chance to have another attack here. Roberto, Roberto, it's Christian Maggio, isn't it? Knocks it back to Raul Albiol. Centre-back goes on a bit of a run here. Not really too sure where my defending, uh, what my defending was doing there. I decided not to attack the ball but for some reason it, uh, I get another let off the goalkeeper beaten all ends up there again for a second time and they hit the woodwork for a second time before the end of the first half but we're still in the first half here stop his time as Podolski comes down the left hand side brilliant tackle by Raul Albiol stood up the cross though and I can't really explain what happened there it went down for some reason as a Jonathan goal but you'll be able to see from all of the replays that it really wasn't a Jonathan goal unless the ball was across the line before the defender got his head to it. I think it's an own goal, but I'm really not too sure. It just looped in towards the back post, kind of like Ronaldinho in 2006. And the goalkeeper got his defender in the way and a uh, goalkeeper went to either catch it or punch it. I'm not really too sure. And the defender goes up for it. And you'll have to tell me, is this over the line before he makes the uh, the header and knocks it into the back of the net? I think that's still outside of the uh, of the goal line. And that should go down as an own goal. I mean, obviously, Jonathan's not going to complain. He gets a goal to his uh, to his tally. and actually gets his legs swiped there. But Musa Soko gets a good turn in. Breaks into the box. Really nice run. The shot deflected. And keeper reacts well to keep it out. That's the one place in their side that uh, they're not exactly the strongest, Napoli. Obviously, last season... In real life, they had uh, Pepe Reina on loan from Liverpool before he went to Bayern Munich. And this season, they don't have the strongest of goalkeeping lineups. They did have, obviously, uh, Morgan De Sanctis prior to his move to Roma in the season before uh, Reina was at, uh, at Naples. And uh, they really struggle goalkeeper wise on the game this year. They don't seem to go out of their way to buy a new keeper. They seem to be quite content playing the kind of mid-70s Raphael and Ander Haar. But Podolski draws a good save out of Raphael here and then if the defending hadn't been any better we would have made it 2-1 but a brilliant last ditch tackle. Keeps the score lines level as we had 20 minutes from time. We're still playing the ball about really nicely though. Jonathan's going to get it back inside to Sissoko and that is a very very good finish. They've hit the woodwork twice and it went outside the goal in the wrong way as far as they were concerned. We hit the woodwork there and he gets his angles just right because it comes back across the goal line and into the side netting the other side so uh, we find ourselves in front for the first time in the game not necessarily well deserved but uh, Handanovic gets a good save there to uh, th thwart Gonzalo Higuain tried to give him the cheeky drop of the shoulder and do him with the eyes and knock it over the top of him but the goalkeeper read it very well indeed Rafael makes another good reaction save there and uh, Dries Mertens is going to get uh, Gonzalo Higuain involved again Marek Hamsik threw in stoppage time brilliant turn inside completely sold me with the uh, with the fake shot but Ranocchia comes across gets in a good block and they're still going to continue the pressure as we head deeper into uh, stoppage time try the ball over the top again but for a second time Handanovic is, uh, is canny to it and tips it over the bar although Hamsik was in the end offside and the chance would wouldn't have counted had it gone into the back of the net. So in the first game, we deserved three points and got one. And in the second game, we didn't really deserve anything and got all three. So I can't really complain too much. So we'll take four points from those two games. And uh, hopefully we can uh, kick on from here. There's a good result away from home against Napoli, who obviously are a very, very good side. So we want to uh, build on that, get ourselves back to the top of the table. Obviously, as you can see in the background right now, we're going for a little bit of a cheeky squad report. If there's anyone in particular you want to have a look at, then feel free to uh, pause the video at any point to have a closer look at this stats. So a few players are growing quite nicely, like Ede uh, alvarez Balanta. Uh, a few of the on-loan players are actually growing nicely as well. And a few of our loaned-in players aren't growing that well. Neither Davide Santon nor Dodo have grown at all. Obviously, Dodo hasn't really seen too much football at all, but Davide Santon's seen a few games, and he's not grown whatsoever since he's been here, which is quite disappointing. And a couple of other of our lone players that have gone out aren't really growing too well either. Chern and Shaqiri, though, is improving. Jonathan isn't, which is a bit of a shame, and I will probably be looking to replace him in uh, the summer transfer window at the end of this season. Mateo Kovacic is growing nicely, though, which is brilliant. 90, drib no, 90 ball control and 88 dribbling for him, which is superb. Like I say, Brozovic is improving across the board as well. Safir Tidea perhaps could grow a little bit more. I would like him to grow quite nicely on his loan spell, and he can come 
in and fill the slot for the uh, the CM spot that we want to fill in. We was looking for a transfer in the window, but if we can bring Tide back and help him grow, then we uh, we can kind of use one of our own rather than bringing in an extra body. Uh, Maro Icardi is growing, but not necessarily still improving when it comes to uh, on pitch performance. He scored a couple of goals recently, but Paulo Dybala has still been outperforming him, and I think has still scored more goals than him despite the fact he's been out for a while now with that injury. I think it was was it broken rib or knee ligament damage I can't quite remember but he's going to be out for a while and uh, as you can see we are still fourth despite the fact that we're still picking up a decent amount of points the uh, the teams above us continue to win or at least match our results we're still two points behind Juve still three points behind Milan and Roma so uh, we're within definitely within a touching distance of the uh, of the first place and actually if we were level on points with Roma and Milan we'd be above them on goal difference it's only Juve's goal difference that is miles above the uh, the rest of us but hopefully we can continue to uh, put some good form together there's uh, what 12 games left of the league season now so plenty of time to get some points to get ourselves into the Champions League spots at the very least if not challenge for that title but that's going to bring today's episode to a close so thank you very much for watching drop the video a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days and uh, I will see you next time